Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Browser Hacking. Uh, today we are going to quickly implement Query Select, um, Query Selector All, is it called? And uh, this JavaScript DOM API where you um, run a CSS selector uh, on the document and it gives you back a list of all of the elements that matched the selector. So, um, I think we're just going to jump right into it by making a test. So we'll see home and on dub dub dub. Welcome. Let's call it QSA for query selector all. So um, let me not fall into that stupid uh, trap of making a badly formed document again. So instead, I'm just going to focus while I tap out the initial DOM here. Okay, so I guess we can have something like um, foo. We'll make a couple of divs here. They will all be class foo, um, but we'll give them different IDs. And then we want to verify that we can find all of these guys using query selector all. So script. Um, how do we do this? We do like um, uh, elements. I don't know. Elements is document query selector all. And we'll just search for dot foo. So everything that matches dot foo should be there. So then we'll just alert elements length. And this should really hopefully be three. Um, yes, it's three. All right, so if you're familiar with the web, you already know about query selector all. So you know you know how this works. And today we're gonna implement it in uh, libweb. So um, right now we are still accumulating all of our um, global object things here, but actually this is not a global object function. This is a document wrapper function. So then I can show you the new way I've started uh, writing these things. So now instead of having everything in lambdas in the um, constructor, I just make a single call here to put native function. This one we're going to call query selector all. And then we put a callback function here. So query selector all. And then the callback functions have, they always have this particular signature. So it's a static function where it returns a JS value. Um, and it gets as its only argument, the JS interpreter. And then um, you fetch the this value and the arguments and everything from the interpreter object. So let's see, let's write out this function. So document wrapper, query selector all. Okay, now I think the, we get to this object from the interpreter like so, but I think we're just going to uh, move this to a separate helper function here. So we'll make one like document, um, document from because we want the, the this value uh, we want to convert it into a DOM document pointer because that's the thing that we actually need to perform the query on. So we'll move this up here and because it is possible to provide a different this value when you call a um, like DOM, JS DOM function, right? So we have to make sure that uh, we're converting it to the right thing. And then here, we don't really have a good way to verify that that this thing is a document wrapper, I guess we could do something like um, if this object uh, class name is not, or wait, let's do it this way, string view uh, document wrapper is not. We could do something like that. Just verify that it is a um, the correct type. And then if that's indeed not the case, we could even throw an exception. So we could be good boys and throw a 
Oh, what is it? A um, this error type error, I think. I think it's supposed to be a type error. We'll throw a type error for now. Um, okay, and then finally we can just return that. So just a little bit of setup. Document is document from. So the way that we get the this value from the interpreter is we just ask for it, and then we run the uh, to object operation on the this value because this value may be not an object. So we turn it into an object. If that doesn't work out, all right, that means that we have an exception. So uh, we have to uh, return so that we can go back to exception handling eventually. We sort of manually unwind whenever exceptions happen. Um, and that's why we also return immediately here. Uh, but if the this value is convertible to an object, then we're all good, and we should end up down here. So we'll just do this as well. Okay. Document, document from interpreter. And then if that fails, return an empty value, or undefined in this case. So then we want to look at the argument. So we usually do this little thing here. So then we can just ask if arguments is empty. I think, I don't know what we're supposed to return. I'm just going to return null. Um, maybe that's not the right thing, but there is a million years in front of us where we can fix all these little things. So uh, here we'll grab the selector from the very first argument. And then what's left now is actually running the um, uh, selector. So what we got to do then is, ooh, we don't really have an API for this. I guess we'll do something like um, match where elements is document query selector all. We just had a thing. No, no, no. Um, query selector all with the selector. And um, then let's see. So in reality, you're supposed to, this function is supposed to return a node list object, but we don't have that yet. So I think we're just going to make um, like a plain JavaScript array. And then in the future, we should go here and actually make a static node list to return. But we'll just use a plain array for now since we don't have node lists. Um, so um, let's see, we'll call it node list. Let's say fix me. This should be a static node list, not a plain JS array. Um, so we'll allocate a new array, heap allocate JS array, and then we will go through the elements. So element in elements node list push um, element, I guess. And oh, we need to include the array class. Runtime array, all right. And then finally, we will return the node list. So that's pretty good. Now we just need to implement, I don't know, hold on, actually. This is going to give us a list of DOM elements, but then we have to put those in um, wrappers. Because we can't, we can't give out like raw C++ pointers to JavaScript. We have to give out wrapper objects because then JavaScript understands how to use them. So this will be a matter of wrapping this guy. So say wrap interpreter heap element. Okay. So then let's go and implement document query selector <clears throat> query selector all. Um, oh look, we already have get elements by name. 
So I guess we can put him next to this guy. This will be a vector of, I guess, element like this is fine. Uh, query selector all. We'll take the selector as a string view, I think. Okay, query, um, well, whatever. Document get elements by name. So how do we do this? First thing is we need to parse this um, selector. So um, do we have the CSS parser here? No, we don't. So we'll need the CSS parser, CSS parser, all right. And then we should be able to, um, let's see, how the heck does this work? Parse um, CSS. Oh, we don't expose selector parsing. Well, we'll need something for that. So maybe here we'll say selector text, and then uh, selector is parse selector, selector text. Uh, and if that fails, then we'll return an empty vector. Maybe we should return something else in that case, but we'll go with an empty vector for now. Otherwise, if this works, then we will uh, go through each um, element in the whole document subtree and say um, we'll say if oh actually we can we can say element here we don't have to call it node so if the element mm, oh no let's ask the selector engine so we'll need the selector engine Selector engine. Query. Okay, so if selector engine matches the selector, the element, if they match, then um, elements append element. All right, I got, I got a good feeling about this. So. There we go with that, and then, you know, maybe this should not return element star, but rather like, um, maybe it should be a non-null ref putter vector. So that we only have non-null elements in here. And we also um, strongly keep them alive, like we share ownership with them instead of, um, relying on something, somebody else to do it. Because this API here is kind of spooky when you look at it, right? Because you get a vector of element pointers, but who keeps them alive? Not you. Uh, document, I guess, does, but what if the DOM is mutated? Should probably go and, and change this API eventually. Anyway, so if the selector engine matches, then we will append it to this vector, so element, elements. And then finally, we'll return the elements. So this is pretty good. Now we just need a parse selector. So we have the CSS parser, but it doesn't expose a way to, to get a selector individually. So what we want is a selector object, essentially. Do we store these somehow? We just um, store them like this, I think. Who keeps these guys anyway? A selector has a vector of complex selectors, right? And then each complex selector has a compound selector. Yeah, yeah, yeah this all seems very familiar. So let's see how the style rules look like. So they just have a vector of selector. All right, 
So it's a value type. Good. That means that we can, um, the CSS parser can just return an optional selector, parse selector, const string view. All right. So parse, where's parse selector? This function right here will parse um, current rule selectors. Okay, so it expects a rule. It's a little bit awkward, but maybe we can just make it work. So ref putter. Uh, no, no, hold on. Optional selector parse selector. So let's select your text and We'll make a parser object, selector text, and we'll return parser, parse individual selector. And then we'll have to come up with that thing. So I think this is just a matter of having like parse individual selector, returning an option selector. And, um, Basically, we just call parse selector and then return current rule selectors last. It's pretty goofy, uh, and obviously we don't do any error checking or something, but we're just trying to move forward with something here, so we're going to be happy with that. So now we have a bunch of problems. Let's go and fix them. This did not work. How about that? Okay, and then we're probably missing the definition, the declaration of error. One day I'm going to stop mixing up definition and declaration, but not today. Then I can't do what exactly? It doesn't know. Wait, what? Okay, let's read the problem. Uh, we can't find a constructor because we need two arguments. So the type error needs... Uh, that's not a document. Okay. We got very uh, professional error messages here in the system, as you can see. Mm, oh, query selector all oh, needs to. Uh, here we have to check has value. I thought that was going to be a null type, but or like um, a pointer type. And then here, this guy needs to be dot value instead, right? And then we also need to say that we want to. Um, Wait, what are we missing here? We're missing a paren, and we're also missing a return iterator. Iteration decision continue. Okay. And what else don't you like? You don't like that I am doing... This is a const... Um... Wait, who's const here? On 323, 320. So this append here tries to append a const element star to this vector, which expects a non const. No, that's not the case. The problem is that I'm taking the address of it. And I can't do that. Because if I take the address of it, it looks like a pointer. And a vector of non null ref putter does not accept pointers. He only accepts references because, um, because he, he doesn't like non null values. So that's why you're only allowed to give him references. You know, sometimes I wish with C that instead of this error, 
um, it would somehow allow me to annotate that, um, <clears throat> like, if this, if this specific error is triggered, then I could say, have a custom error message saying, hey, this um, type is, th this, uh, this object does not accept pointers, or whatever. But I've seen some, some things with um, um, compiler attributes where they allow you to set up like custom diagnostic messages, like custom warnings and stuff, which is kind of interesting. But I haven't really found a place to use it yet, or I haven't taken the time to figure out how to make use of it, I guess. Anyway, let's try our little QSA test. Um, that crashed. Okay, so we failed to parse. Um, parse selector. Why does that fail? Maybe we should have said parse simple selector or... Wait, what should we have said? Should we have said parse complex selector? Because I guess we don't necessarily want... You can only specify one selector, right? So what we really want is one single complex selector. Um, so... Let's see, parse selector, parse individual selector, parse complex. Okay, we'll parse the complex selector, and then instead of doing this ugly thing where we allow the parser to accumulate things, we can just say, <clears throat> um, oh wait, is this thing completely self-contained? Kind of. Anyway, um, then maybe we can do this downstairs. Complex selector. Uh, if complex selector has value, then we can even fail. Look at us, failing nicely. Um, otherwise, we need to make a selector from a vector of complex selector, so complex selector dot value, something like that. Will that work? I uh, tried recording another video earlier today, but I was like, I just. It was, I, I was productive and everything, but it just felt not fun for some reason. So I didn't, uh, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to make like a not fun video. Uh, it's much better if I'm having fun while doing it. So that's why I decided to go back to the browser stuff because that's where we're having fun right now. Um, that's, that's just how it is. Okay, we're still not working. So what's wrong then? What's wrong with this? Still simple selector size, oh, less than 100. At character four in CSS. So we're at the very end of the CSS here. Parse complex selector. So does it try to continue or something? Where are you, dude? Um, we're here. So there's an infinite loop where we parse a simple selector, and then if the component has no value, we break. Parse simple selector. Wait, but why would this find a selector? So it, it seems to me like we're looping until we hit uh, 100 uh, simple selectors. So why is that happening? So this somehow succeeds 100 times, right? Debug. I now have 
simple selector size, simple selectors. Okay, so why would this succeed when we run out of string? Like we should just not succeed, right? If, um, wait, how do we know that we're at the end? If we get a null, if peaking gives us a null character. Wait, what does this mean that this succeeds? Original index is not index. Consume white space or comments. That's strange. The CSS parser is, is not very good. Uh, it needs to be broken up into a lexer and a parser because it's like full of dealing with white space everywhere and it's so weird. Um, I wrote this in, in a bit of a hurry and <laughs> I keep regretting it since but it wouldn't be too hard to fix. But what are we gonna do here? So I guess if we're all out of characters, peak says no, then we'll return this. So what happens otherwise? Like why are you, I guess you, you can fall through and it gives you some kind of selector maybe. Maybe it always makes a universal selector because it's the, um, the fallback scenario. So it gives you like the, um, the star selector. You get this guy every time. Mm, that's a little weird. I guess it's because he's like implicitly always in the leftmost position in every selector, even if you don't type it out. But regardless. Okay, well, something else failed. That's um, progress. <laughs> so now we made it to component list index is not zero. I now have one simple selectors. Isn't that nice? We should probably dump out the selector that we parsed because I have a feeling that it might look a little goofy. Um, do we have some kind of dump selector thing? Dump selector. Okay, so we have dump sheet. We have dump sheet, but that only dumps a whole style sheet. We have dump rule. Dump rule knows how to dump selectors. Mm, I think we could separate that out into separate functions and dump selector 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 then we will just put this into his very own function selector great um, yeah. Uh, I think we wouldn't need these if we included the forwarding header plop. Maybe we did need some of those, but we can add them. Um, seems like I didn't finish my thought here. So dump selector selector value. Oh, this project always growing, getting bigger and bigger. But 
also better and better, I think. Mm. I spent so much time lately working on the JavaScript engine and browser stuff, but you know, I have to follow whatever keeps me the most interested at the moment because that's when I make I make like at least two x better work if I'm doing the thing I'm interested in right now. So um, I think it's worth worth like allowing this tunnel vision thing to happen sometimes. So I should make a hyperlink to this. All right, where's that selector? It's a descendant selector. Looking for the class foo. Well, what's wrong with that? That's a perfectly fine selector, no? So maybe we can, can we just see what some other selectors look like? So if we just uh, make a, nah, let's just go in. Let's just look at the selectors that we have in this thing right here. Um, style sheets. What do they look like? That's a very simple. Tag name body. Mm. Why did he think he was a descendant selector, actually? So it wasn't a descendant selector. A descendant selector means that you would have um, something on his left, but we didn't have something on his left. So I guess that's just some quirk of the parser that he thinks he's a descendant because that's the default thing. And the relation, 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 relation. So we will parse one complex selector, and then what do we normally do? Do we overwrite the leftmost? Um, I feel like we're probably overwriting the relation of the leftmost complex selector. Let's see. Yes, exactly. That's what we're doing. So we're, uh, after we parse a full selector, we uh, go and like, manually overwrite the um, relation of the very leftmost complex selector to be no relation. That's why um, that's why it works. So we have to do this step right here when we are doing our little um, manual selector parse. So complex selector dot relation. There we go. I think that'll do it. Hmm. It's um it's nice to work on CSS a little bit. It's always I, I feel like I'm always saying, oh it's nice to do this, it's nice to do that. But I I this is this like this whole project is just full of things I think are nice and interesting, so of course I'm just gonna sit here and say that everything is nice all the time because I think all of this stuff is nice. Three. Look at that. We got them. So uh, I guess we should we could improve the test a little bit. Um, but the fact that the number three came out, that's um that's a good sign. So uh, we have that QSA. Let me add a hyperlink so that I can stop typing QSA. QSA, query selector, all test. OK, so we should do something nice here. Like, um, I, like to do, I like to do this. I know that it's a bit silly, but somehow it just uh, feels nice. So instead of just checking the length, we can do um, Maybe we should have some kind of output place where we can put the uh, output out. Okay, we'll make a pre and then um, let's oh, let's do some exception stuff maybe. Um, if 
elements length is not three, then throw, throw something, throw one. <laughs> um, and we'll catch this. And if we catch something, we'll say, uh, document get element by id out inner HTML. We gotta use all this uh, fun stuff that we have made for the browser to gotta test it out, right? So error number um, e. Okay, and the elements we should be able to get the zeroth index. Um, and what can we really look up? We want to know his ID, right? So we should be able to check like if ID is equal to foo one. If it's not equal, then it's an error. So let's create these. Okay, and otherwise, if everything goes well, Then we'll say in here's to mail, um, success. Okay, very advanced test. So let's see if that works in Firefox. Indeed a success, but I think we're not gonna have a huge success um, in the Serenity browser because we don't have the ID property on elements. So we'll have error number two. That's cool that it worked though. Um, and oh, we should probably stop dumping that selector here. So let's, let's I guess we can commit what we have so far. Um, git commit a loop web. Add um, very naive support for document query selector all. Uh, this currently returns a plain JS array of matching elements matching a selector. Plain array, a JS array. Uh, more correct behavior would be to return a static node list, but as we don't have node lists right now, that'll be a task for the future. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. So let's add the ID getter on, you know, let's look up where it belongs. Um, um ID attribute. The ID property. Ooh, W3 schools. Those guys know what's up. But let's also check MDN. So reflecting the id global attribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Wait, what did I want to know about this? Oh, yeah, right, where it is. So it's an element thing. It's on the element interface. All right, so element wrapper. We will put it here as a native property. Id, uh, and then we'll have id getter and id setter. So um, getters and setters are slightly different uh, signature, at least the, the getter is the same signature as a native function, but the setter is a bit different because the setter doesn't return anything and it also takes a value. So, uh, it getter and it setter. And then we can just piggyback on the inner HTML call things. So, this code is sort of um, evolving towards being generated. So um, like every refactoring that I make here, it sort of pushes it closer and closer to something that we could generate from an IDL file. And it's starting to get to a pretty good place, I think. So um, 
I think with these guys we will just have maybe we can even do just a um, attribute ID like this and likewise set attribute ID value to string right yeah that's pretty good so maybe this would just work wouldn't that be nice <laughs> to say I think that's really neat because the uh, test page was pretty you know using some pretty complex stuff compared to our humble beginnings with this browser and, and our JavaScript engine and everything where is the thing why are these not in alphabetical order so confusing um, look at this adorable test Man, I can't believe how uh, good the progress is with um, with the JavaScript support. Uh, I thought it would take longer to. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I thought it would be slower, but it's really maturing uh, at a very good pace. So I'm really happy with it. Anyway, um, I guess we can do a commit here just quickly, adding ID attribute property to the element interface. Look what add element ID property to the bindings. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for today's video. So, you know, actually, let's try uh, some more interesting selector. Let's say that we only want foo if it's a the child of a code wouldn't that be wild so code foo so we should only get two so we should only get two of them and foo one should not be in there plop and plippity plop no that's not right um, error number one. So the length is not two. What is the length then? Wait, why can't I type now? Okay, alert moments length. It's one. What's happened? Okay, so alert elements zero ID. Who is it matching then? He doesn't even have an ID. Oof. All right, well, this is getting interesting. So uh, I think we almost quit too early there. Query selector all code foo. Um, Node type, can we get that? Or wait, node name. We matched the code thing. Oh shit. Um, that doesn't make any sense. Or let me just verify that I'm not a complete uh, idiot. So, oh, I have to edit the thing here. <laughs> Because I've been editing inside Serenity and it doesn't show up on the outside. Um, so if we just do this, this, code foo, and then this guy shouldn't be here. Yeah, so that should work. So it's not working right. Okay, well that's that's good to know. So we gotta fix it. 
Why does this match the code element? It should not match the code element. Um, let's see how this works. So if the selector engine matches a given element, we will add it. So let's dump the selector again because maybe now it looks maybe now it doesn't look right. Libraries, libweb, and applications browser, and sync, and run. <laughs> Should start making um, tests for the browser as well. Selector tag name code. Oh shit! All right, we are aborting the parse too soon. Um, when we're parsing the selector, parse complex selector. Um, it will call parse white space somewhere. Parse simple selector. And let's see. So we go past code, and then here. We consume white space for comments. Wait, but who was calling us? If there's no value, then we break. Why is it why is it branching on this? Like I'm so confused by the fact that it like all the other code is not branching on the result of consume white space or comments. Except this guy right here. Like this is so sketch. So I feel like this code should be like this. And then if there's like there's nothing left, then we would fail. Because if peak fails, that means that we're at the end of the input. Error number one. Well, now the selector looks better. Tag name code, and then class foo. Um, that's definitely better. complex selector but it needs the descendant relation is missing so maybe I needed parse selector after all because every complex selector has a relation to the one on his left mm. yep 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 so We just this code is just developing backwards, like uh, just coming closer and closer to how I originally wrote it. Parse selector. Um, which will give us complex selector. Uh, current rule selector is a pen. Okay, so Oh, right, yeah, yeah, then we wanted the first individual selector. Mm-hmm. 
source selector if current rule selectors is empty, turn this, otherwise return current rule selectors last. Wait. Current rule, yeah, 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 that's right. And now we are spinning forever. Doing what? Probably just parsing. Um, let's see. All right, so let's stop that program. And then we'll get the browser here, see what he's doing. Look at him, parse selector. It's very silly. So he's calling parse selector. And this guy will just go forever. So we should definitely check um, if peak fails here. And uh, this parser is just uh, desperately needing improvement. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it would be cool to write one that didn't lex first. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so tag name code class foo, but I'm missing the relation still. So uh, let's see. I wonder if this runs correctly here. Yes, it does. Okay. So... Relation none. Why don't we get a relation descendant? Descendant parse complex selector. So the second one should have this relation. So dump selector does what exactly? Dump selector, unless it's relation none, in which case it will log none, log nothing. So let's just make sure that we are seeing this right. Because it's a descendant selector, bro. Why don't you? Why don't you? Non tag name code class. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, it's thinking that it's part of the... Um, Oh, so it's uh, the parsing is wrong. It thinks I'm doing this. So I'm doing code.foo. There's actually code space.foo. So um, these are very different, right? Because this means an element with tag name code, class name foo. This is an, um, an element with class name foo that's the descendant of an element with tag name code. Um, that's why. So this is only a single complex selector here. Crap, okay, parse individual selector. Calls parse selector. Complex selector is parse complex selectors. Which means that. Descendant. Why are we bailing? Mm. 
So we have two simple selectors. And it should actually think that it's supposed to discover that these are two separate complex selectors, not two simple selectors within one complex selector. So maybe I was wrong to add this here. But no, if we have no more input, then we can't parse another simple selector. Um, Oh, that's why it was like this. So if there's any white space when we try to parse a simple selector, then uh, what follows is no longer a simple selector. Because a simple selector is just a thing I was just showing you, like this. This is a complex selector uh, with two simple selectors. So a complex selector with simple um, tag name code, simple uh, class foo, right? Whereas um, this here, code foo, this is a, oh, <laughs> not like that. This is a complex um, with simple tag name code, followed by a complex with simple class foo relation descendant. So we are messing that up here. That's, that's what this returning a value from this guy was about. Now I understand it. So yeah, if we find any white space after a simple selector, there it's time to stop parsing simple selectors. Man, okay. I'm glad I could work that out. And I have nobody to be upset at because I wrote this code and it is what it is. <laughs> now it fails instead. Because, oh, now we never leave that code, right. So now we just loop forever in the simple selector thingy again. So here. F no peak. There we have it. All right. So I don't know. We can actually see down here that the selector looks correct. So I totally forgot what the. Um, structure layout if the selector object was. It's good to get a reminder. So yeah, each one of these guys is a complex selector on each row here. Um, great. So it works. That's awesome. So let's see, get div. That means that I think we will um, push these changes as they are. So the web um, support document um, support more advanced selectors uh, document query selector oh um, I made some mistakes in the uh, CSS in the parsing selector parsing it now it's now able to parse multiple selectors composed of multiple complex selectors instead of just one complex selector. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it for today's video. So. Uh, that's good that we we brought it a little farther, further, farther, whichever. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope we saw something interesting while I struggled to get Query Selector all to do what I want. But now I think we're in a good place where we can, we can probably uh, you you could make a pretty sweet test suite out of this, for example. Uh, it would be much much easier to exercise the. Um, 
selector engine now that we have a direct API for it accessible to JavaScript. So very, very cool stuff. Anyway, I hope you saw something interesting here and uh, I'm really glad that we're all still here and we're hacking on something. We're hacking on browser stuff now and uh, who knows what we'll hack on tomorrow. But uh, thanks for being here today. I'll see you next time. Bye.